Hey guys, BigSquareRoadDrew.com. Just a thought and a note on this Friday. The moronic, criminal, disgusting congressman, Democratic congressman from California, Brad Sherman, <laughs> has, has moved to put up a bill to outlaw U.S. citizens from buying cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Are you kidding me, Brad? We, he did the same thing last year. You know, one sits there and wonders, hmm, just how involved in the deep state this criminal is. Um, we do know. First, let's let's listen to what he. Well, let's. Last time he said this, we exposed that not only was his thinking backwards and asinine, he was being paid by a payment processor. His largest donor is a payment processor, who, by the way, got busted for an eleven million dollar fraud of all the stuff he was claiming Bitcoin would do. This guy needs to be dragged out of his seat and tarred and feathered in the middle of the street. Idiot. Let's listen to him. I'm going to play it through once and then play it again and stop and comment. I look for colleagues to join with me in introducing a bill to uh, outlaw cryptocurrency uh, uh, owner uh, purchases by Americans so that we nip this in the bud, in part because not uh, an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact that the dollar is the standard unit of international uh, finance and transactions. Clearing through the New York Fed is critical for major oil, oil and other transactions. And it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant. So whether it is to disempower our foreign policy, our tax collection uh, enforcement, or our law, traditional law enforcement, the purposes of cryptocurrency, the advantage it has over uh, uh, sovereign currency is solely uh, to aid in the disempowerment of, uh, of uh, the United States and the rule of law. So, <laughs> I look all right. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know where to start. First of all, yes, obviously, what a lot of what he said is true, but he's missing the point. It's not that Bitcoin is so great; it's that the dollar is so fucking criminal, so bad, and the only way to support the dollar is market manipulation and bombing countries. So, Mr. Sherman, we don't give a shit what you think. I'm going to go through. Word by word of this idiot's comments, because it's infuriating. For colleagues to join with me in introducing a bill to uh, outlaw cryptocurrency uh, uh, owner uh, purchases by Americans. Right there. You're not, you're not fixing the problem of the strength of the dollar. You are absolutely abusing the citizens of the United States by not allowing them to make a choice in what they want to use as their currency. You can't stop cryptos all around the world, Brad Sherman, but you can set your country back decades by even attempting to, to pass a law to ban people from buying cryptocurrencies. It would never work. You can't stop people from getting their hands on cryptocurrencies. You can make it more difficult. But all that would do is put the United States of America, the citizens of the United States of America, back 50 years as the rest of the world moves into a high-tech future. You are the problem, Mr. Sherman. So that we nip this in the bud. Nip what in the bud? That you're losing power because you've abused the U.S. dollar? Absolutely. We are not going to let you nip this in the bud. We would rather nip you in the bud. in part because not uh, an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact that the dollar is the standard unit of international uh, finance and transactions. Clearing through the New York Fed is critical for major oil. Well, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Then why didn't you take care of the dollar? Why are you blowing budgets out out of control. Why is the Fed printing secret trillions and trillions and quadrillions of dollars and shoveling them out the back door? It's not Bitcoin that did that. It's you that did that. 
You and your people did that. The United States decided to destroy the dollar when it went off the gold standard in 71 or 73 or whenever it was that we officially went off of it. It is not the fault of Bitcoin that it's going to be used around the world. It is the fault of the managers of the U.S. dollar, you, Mr. Sherman, the politicians of the United States, and the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. You're the ones who screwed up our country. ...and other transactions, and it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position... First of all, everybody has a different purpose for cryptocurrency. But it is not my announced purpose to take out the dollar. It's my announced purpose to say, I'm a sovereign human being. You don't have control of me, Mr. Sherman. I can do whatever I want and use whatever I want as money. As the politician of the United States, you can say, yes, you have to use U.S. dollars to pay our taxes. But that's it. Let's go back to the Constitution. You can Freedom of the competition is money is so important. Because if there's no competition in money, then you can abuse and use and destroy the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar like you've done for the past 100 years. You have to have competition. The computer programs that rigged the gold and silver market destroyed that competition since the 1960s. But cryptos are bringing it back, hopefully. Where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant. So whether it is to disempower our foreign policy, our tax collection uh, enforcement, or our law, traditional law enforcement. See, all three of those, he's just looking at the, the bad side of cryptos. The good side is cryptos. Is, it's very easy to catch a criminal in cryptocurrencies because you got a track. You got, you got the ledger of where this person went, which wallet came in and out of. They can't hide that easily. And it, law enforcement has already chimed in saying, hey, Actually, things like uh, in 2008, we could have figured out the problem with the monetary system real easily if the cryptocurrencies were in place, if blockchain was in place. The purposes of cryptocurrency, the advantage it has over uh, uh, sovereign currency is solely uh, to aid in the disempowerment. Voila. Absolutely. Disempowerment of him and people like him who get paid to say these things. Absolutely. It is a wonderful gift to the people of America. It is not something you're going to ban. You, first of all, you can't ban it. And But second of all, and the most important thing is, any country that bans their cryptocurrency, any citizen from buying cryptocurrencies, is going to destroy that comp- country's ability to transact business in the future. This is absolutely un-American what he's saying. And he should be tried for treason. Where's Maxine Waters when we need her? Treason for Brad Sherman because he wants to destroy the United States of America's future economic system. Do you think anybody else in the world is going to ban their cryptos? No, maybe Venezuela. They're all moving forward while Brad Sherman wants to stay in the past and destroy all of our ability to to participate in the future as it goes forward, as it matures and improves and becomes decentralized. Well, we don't have to have people like Brad Sherman telling us what's right and wrong about the world. Of uh, of uh, the United States and the rule of law. Crazy, right? Absolutely. Cryptos are doing well. Why are cryptos doing well? Because they're manipulated. A lot of people are talking about Tether, about Tether how Bitfinex is trying to get out of its Tether position. So they're moving Tether to other exchanges to buy Bitcoin. I said it all along. The destruction of Tether is not a bad thing for cryptocurrencies. The existence of Tether is a bad thing for cryptocurrencies because it's a manipulation tool. If, If everybody got out of Tether, where would they go? They wouldn't go into fiat. They wouldn't be selling their Tether to sell Bitcoin, to sell Litecoin. No. They'd be getting out of their tether to buy Bitcoin, to buy Litecoin, to buy other cryptocurrencies because they know Tether, Bitfinex, Binance, Block One, that's the crypto cabal that needs to go away for us to move forward. Any crashing in the price, and it might happen. They could crash it to zero with a click of a mouse. But how long would it stay there, really? You look at the old crashes, it was from the peak. We are so far from the peak. 
all the weak hands are gone. When Mt. Gox went down, Bitcoin was peaking. Oh, went over a thousand bucks. Everybody and their mother was buying Bitcoin. And that's what let them crush the price of Bitcoin. In 2017, into 2017, all the weak hands were getting in. Absolutely. Wahoo! Bitcoin, $20,000. Crash because all those weak hands got out because of the manipulators. Is it going to happen now? No, there's no weak hands. There's no weak hands in cryptocurrencies today. And all these people saying, oh, when Tether goes down, the market's going to crash and I'm going to buy up the bottom and the big whales are going to get in at the bottom. And who's going to sell to them? There's no weak hands left. So no, cryptos won't crash to nothing. The exchanges might go away, which would be a great thing. But there's no weak hands left. Big monster crashes only happen when the weak hands are in. So next time we can't in, what's it going to be? Probably approaching $100,000. So we don't have to worry about a 90% retracement until we hit $100,000 again and all the weak hands come in. Get it? Good. <laughs> um, for Friday, my, the Friday road trip for Road to Ruta members, I just posted it as an update on cryptos, gold, and silver, kind of where we are and where I think this year is going. It's a really good one. Uh, if you guys aren't a member yet, Go to subscribe today and join the Road to Ruta, and you get a music box while they last, which is 30, wait, it was 70 original songs, recordings, some good, some bad, some studio, some bathroom recordings, going back to the 1980s of my music. It is pretty fun. You get that free with every subscription, and you get one Veritasium token. All Veritasium has to do is go back to the old highs. Its old highs in January were 500 bucks a, a token. So well, this would be worth 500 bucks back in January of 2018. All it has to do is hit its old high and you make $200 for this investment right now of a Road to Ruta one-year membership. Go check it out. Go to RoadToRuta.com and hit subscribe today. And I'll see you guys down the line.